Hi, my name is Melissa Daniels and I have strabismus. Strabismus is when your eyes are not pointing in the same direction like this. And I have been working for the last four years through vision therapy, getting my brain to use my eyes together so that they can become straight. I also had a strabismus surgery as part of the process. So one of the things I've been working on lately is maintaining progress since I've graduated from vision therapy. And I've been using this new app called Equal Eyes, and it's an app for virtual reality, which is really cool. It's got a lot of different eye exercises and games to help get your eyes working together. And there's all sorts of settings to set it up so that it's a little bit easier for those of us with strabismus. I love the app. I completely recommend it. Here's the disclaimer. This app is not a good idea, and I do not recommend it in any way for anybody who hasn't done vision therapy, okay? In vision therapy, you are learning so much. You're learning how your brain works, how your eyes are working. Your vision therapist and optometrist are helping structure an entire program for you, right? It's phenomenal. Once you've done all of that, you've actually learned a ton and you can work on things a little bit more on your own and with the help of your optometrist. So that is who this app, I would say, is more for. If you, are really wanting to try virtual reality and you have strabismus and you're wanting to fix it, awesome. The best thing that you can do is find a vision therapy office and get started there and they can kind of get you going in the right direction. And if you go to strabismussolutions.com slash findvt, you can just fill out the form and I will actually send you my personal recommendations for wherever you live in the entire world. So that is your first step is to be in vision therapy. If you've already done that and you have equal eyes, or you're thinking about purchasing it, this video is for you. If you don't have it yet, you can get it over at avalonweb.com slash au. And if you use the code MDVR, Melissa Daniels VR, right? MDVR, you can get an extra 10% off, which is awesome. Without further ado, we're gonna jump into the video about how I'm using some of these different apps. Today, I want to start by highlighting four different games or scenes within the Equal Eyes app that I use for anti-suppression. So there, I'm gonna show you some videos from within the app. The problem is that the videos only show what my left eye is seeing in the app. And because I have marked in the app that my right eye is the weak eye, there are certain things that only my right eye sees. And so you're not gonna be seeing the full game within these videos, but I'll try to explain um, what the right eye would be seen, and then you can see what the left eye is seen. And through that, we can kind of get some ideas of how this app works and what you can do to make it even better. Okay, so this first game is called Frog It. And the idea of Frog It is that you have this little frog, and you can't see the frog because only my right eye can see the frog, but you see a little grid in the middle of the, um, the game that is where the frog sits. And so your left eye can see the grid, your right eye can see the frog, and you can kind of try to keep those lined up. The idea is that you wanna move the frog across traffic and across the boats and get it to the end, sitting in one of the little slots at the end. And you, the goal is to get five different frogs. I've only ever gotten up to four before I lose life. Um, one thing that is really important and valuable with this game is that you wanna make sure you're using your peripheral vision. As you use your peripheral vision, you're going to keep those targets aligned more effectively. So you might try to keep the mountains on the sides in view as you're focusing on the frog. You also can look at the furthest boat or the closest car, whatever, and you're trying to keep multiple things. You're dividing your awareness so that you're looking something at something far away and something really close to you. And this dividing your awareness can help lock in that central vision. Both eyes can see most of the scene and only the weak eye can see the moving part. What happens is your brain is learning to use those eyes together, but giving the weaker eye a little bit more work. The next game is really, I mean, it's not similar, but a similar concept. It's an anti-suppression game, it's whack-a-mole. And so you can see here in the beginning, you have two mallets and you use, you're going to be using those mallets to smash the moles. There's three different modes in this game. You can either make it so both eyes can see both hammers. You can make it so one eye can see each hammer or you can make it so only the weak eye can see both of the hammers. 
That's the option that I use because again, I'm trying to do that situation where both eyes can see the majority of the scene, but only my weak eye can see the hammers. So I usually choose that third option with only the weak eye being able to see. And if you're wondering how you set which eye is your weak and your strong eye, there's a settings section at the beginning of the app. You just go in there and there's like a little button and you can either check your right eye as the weak eye or your left eye as the weak eye. And it automatically makes it so that in each game where there's like a weak or strong eye option, it automatically puts the one that you checked. So it's really cool. Um, so now you can see that I made it so only my weak eye could see the hammers, which is why you can't see it in the video. One thing that can be really great with this type of game is to start working on crossing the midline and working on getting those brain hemispheres crossing. And this is a really big concept in vision therapy and can really help. And so if you've done vision therapy, you already know this. So one thing that I'll do is I'll alternate. I'll do right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. But while I'm doing that, at the beginning I might do right foot and, and I step forward with my right foot when I do my right hand forward or step forward with my left foot when I do my left hand forward. Then, you know, if I get to the next level, maybe I'll switch and I'll do the right hand with the left foot, stepping forward at the same time, left hand, right foot. So doing those kinds of things kind of integrates both sides of your brain, gets your brain just work. It's really great and powerful for getting that brain all working together and everything smooth. The next app that I like to use for anti-suppression is the game called Anti-Suppression. And this one is really simple. It's not really a game. It just kind of gives you an environment to practice getting your eyes working together. And so what happens is you are presented with a picture and each eye is seeing a different version of the picture. For example, um, there's a picture of a boy and one I can see the left leg and one eye can see the right leg and the face. And so what happens is in order to see the full picture of the boy with a face and both legs, you have to engage both eyes together. Now this is a, can be really difficult, especially if you've got some anomalous retinal correspondence like I have. And so it's always a work in progress. There's a lot of different picture options. Um, some things that you can do to make this easier or be more successful with it is first move it close close enough to you to where you're able to do it. Most people are able to have more success when the image is closer to you. And then as you're able to do it, then you start moving that distance back. But you always, you know, start where you can actually see it. Another technique that I use is gestalt awareness and basically it's what you can do is you can try to see the whole edge of that paper and see the whole thing all as one piece. Um, instead of looking and saying, okay, here's the ears, here's the tail, here's the stripes, here's the easel, whatever. And you're looking at like all these individual pieces, you wanna try to view it all at once. Um, David Cook is an optometrist. He uses the analogy of like a business card. When you look at a business card, you aren't seeing like, oh, there's a phone number, there's a name, there's the, the little graphic, right? It's just, there's a business card. You see it as like one whole piece. And so that's kind of the idea with these that I use to help me engage both eyes and get those pictures lined up as I try to view it as one big whole instead of the individual parts. You can also use the clouds in the background and that can engage your peripheral even further. So you've got this one whole piece in the middle and then how far behind are the clouds? Can you imagine what would be behind you? And so you start building this whole environment around this little card. The last section of this app that I feel is really great for suppression is Tetris. Now, this game is super advanced and difficult, but if you've already been through vision therapy, you should hopefully be able to do it. I can't. I probably will never be able to do these types of games well just because of the anomalous retinal correspondence that I have. But a lot of people are able to do these and they can really help get eyes both eyes working. There's three modes. You've got regular Tetris where you're just playing both eyes can see everything. It's still a great exercise. You've got these fireworks coming past and so that can help you engage your peripheral while your central is working on this other project. <laughs> um, then the next mode is hard and in this mode each block is seen by either the left eye or the right eye. 
And so the blocks are coming down and the idea is you just try to arrange them. This can be really difficult, like as you can see in this picture um, or in the video, remember the, the video is only of what my left eye is seeing. And so it's like that green block is stacked on something, but the left eye can't see it. And so the right eye can see the other blocks. And so you have to put both of those together. If you've got severe suppression of one eye, this can be really difficult. And so definitely this is one like check with your optometrist, see if you're ready for this kind of activity. The third level is deadly and essentially each block is broken up into parts and like within one block, the right eye can, right eye can see part of it and the left eye can see the other part. So it's really, really challenging. To me, it just feels impossible. So I like that there's three different levels. I can kind of do hard. Deadly is just not even there. So these are just different games within the app. And I want you to just notice that if you just were to go into the app and you'd be like, okay, I'm gonna hit the moles, right? And it's not really gonna do anything for your vision. So in order to make it a great exercise, you have to take the initiative and choose like, okay, which hand is gonna be able to see the mallets? And can I engage my peripheral? And in what way can I imagine the depth that I'm seeing? And how can I um, integrate both sides of my body together? So there's so much that you can do as the user, but you're going to have to incorporate all those things in order to make it an effective exercise. Um, tune in next week and we will go into the next group of activities. We're going to talk about activities that help you with stereopsis or depth perception and using your eyes together. So make sure to catch up on that and we will see you in the next video.